it's like it's a it's a good thing to start in the morning um but yeah i'm excited i love your page i love what you guys represent um next gen let's just do this next gen role models is where it's at right now and <laughs> i know start. let's do this <laughs> 8 a.m. in L.A. Woo! Yeah, I was checking what time it was for you. I was like, it's not too late, is it? It's um, 4 p.m. here. 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Perfect. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, um, and I know that you started out as a gymnast. Yes, I did. I was a competitive gymnast for seven years. Um, pretty much took up my entire life because when you're a gymnast, you're always at the gym, constantly training. Um, so... That was what I was doing, and once I switched over to dance, then my life kind of started to change because I got into the industry, um, got involved in acting, but I'm, I don't regret one bit doing gymnastics. It's, ter it's taught me so much about discipline and having the right mindset and hard work because um, it's just one of those sports that completely takes 100% commitment, and obviously most sports like do. But physically, it's just so hard on your body that if you're not properly trained, it really could lead to serious damage to your body. So it's it's very, it's kind of scary in a way. But I definitely don't regret it. And I still, I still do some tricks sometimes. I still do acro. Right now, I can't really at home, like, but yeah. And and can and did that interestingly enough, I I never really did that much gymnastics. I did straight I went straight into dancing at two. Did wow. the um gymnastics confuse you with certain things once you got into the dancing? And how old were you when you started the dancing? Um, I was I think eleven or twelve when I first started dancing. Because I was I kinda took dance classes my whole life generally, but I started really dancing eleven or twelve. And um, I did notice it was hard for me to adjust just because gymnastics is so stiff and rigid. So when I was dancing, it was very, I was very strong, but there was just not so much, there was not enough fluidity and it was kind of choppy. And I really had to like work my way out of the gymnastics uh, way, I guess, you know, tumbling and doing all this, especially that gymnastics, when they do the dance routines, they're not really dance, so to speak. Um, for the most part and they're just not they're not elegant and and fluid and it's it was a very it took me a while to transition definitely but you know i got there um so i'm, I'm glad i did because <laughs> good was, me too yeah and how old were you when you started dancing uh 11 or 12 i believe yeah how old um, are you now? i'm 14. You're 14 yeah i haven't really been um well like doing dancing full-time for a long time it feels like a long time though. I mean, God, I forget I'm almost 15 sometimes. I just can't believe it. It's just, I don't know how that happened. Life goes, so life goes by too fast. I don't know. It feels like the quarantine's gone really fast as well. It's wild. Yeah, sometimes I feel like it's fast. Some days are slow. I mean, honestly, my life hasn't changed that much as much as other people's, especially because I'm homeschooled. Um, and I do a lot of virtual classes and I can still do school without a change. Only thing is, you know, social aspect. Um, but, you know, I mean, I can't complain. Like, we're all we're all stuck. You know, it's not like, oh, poor me. You know, I mean, we're all, there's no choice right now. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you've obviously spent time building your social media platform because you have a number of followers on social media. You've been on social media for a while. Talk to me about what you want to use your social media platform for. Um, I definitely, the thing with social media is I, uh, it's just, it should be filled with positivity. It should be encouraging. It's not always, but I really want to use it for that and use it. I use it to show what I love to do. Um, I post a lot of like my content as far as dancing and everything like that. Basically talents that I've been working on, um, but I want to encourage and motivate young kids to follow their dreams because it is possible. And I really do believe in having a patient, positive mindset because you're not going to always, you're going to hit bumps. You're going to hit mistakes. Life is not perfect, but it's kind of about how you're going to get past that. Um, and the thing with social media is you look at someone's page and it looks great and they're always happy. And that's not always, you're not always happy. Life is not perfect but I try to see a positive outlook. And if the final goal 
if you have a passion strong enough for it, you will get there. Um, but what I would say is that, you know, if you don't, like, if you're trying, for example, if I was an actor to be successful as far as money and get on a huge show and be famous, I wouldn't do it. I act because it makes me happy. Obviously, getting these, you know, re rewards is very rewarding, but I wouldn't do it because success, real, you know, long time success takes a while. And I've obviously still been growing. Absolutely. You're, you're only 14. I mean, a lot of people might be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize she was 14. Um, because you've obviously, you've started out when you were super young and you were obviously a gymnast and then a dancer and now an actor. And you've mm -hmm. done quite a lot, obviously, in your career. And, and people are obviously joining us now. People who are joining us, we've got extra people coming in here onto the chat. Please say hi. We've got Miller here who's talking about her career and talking about using her platform for inspiring others. If you have any questions, chaps, please put the questions in the chat or in the comments. Um, hi, Lara. Many of my next gen generation role models are here too. So I'm happy hey. to be here and joining. Awesome. It's so nice. It's really great. Because what I want to, to get from you, Miller, is just a little bit more advice on kids that are starting out. They're gonna come onto your Instagram page and see what you do. And they're going to think, well, I'm in England or whatever, because we have a lot of Brits joining us because I've been interviewing a few Brits. They might be thinking, wow, well, I want a career in Hollywood. I want to be a dancer in Hollywood or I want to be an actress in Hollywood. Could you could you help out and give them some tips? Yes, um, I would definitely say um, persistence is key. And that is something that definitely took me a long time. I mean, it's just, it takes a long time to realize because you don't get something that maybe someone else gets. And it's just, it can be discouraging, but I feel like if it's something that you really want and you are able to pursue it, if you have the facilities to do it, uh, do it and try and get as much info as you can. Like I remember when I started acting, I kind of didn't take the right approach necessarily, but really, really go through your research, really go through what, what, who you to train with. Training is so important and making sure that you're surrounded by people who are going to uplift you. I know that um, being in an environment with people who are discouraging is totally can wreck your mindset, can wreck your self-confidence. It's happened to me. I still struggle with self-confidence a lot because of that, unfortunately. And especially, especially the gymnastics world was very intense and even past a point of constructiveness. Um, so in, in like making sure you love it, pay attention to yourself, try to block out what you don't need to focus on negativity or people that are your competition. You know, don't take it personal because this is very, it can be a rough world because everyone's, you know, looking out for everyone. Um, and everyone wants to do what you're doing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not everybody. A lot, I'll just rephrase that. A lot of people want to do what you're doing. I mean, I've been in living, living in Los Angeles for, uh, over 10 years and mm. I know so many people show up and they want to do what you're doing. They want to do Hollywood movies. They want to be dancing with, you know, these big people. And, and that's, that's kind of like a, a huge goal for so many to, to, to kind of like start out where you are. But there is a, a lot, a lot of people like you go through negativity and jealousy. And as you said earlier, you are homeschooled. Is there a reason you're homeschooled or is that just how you've chosen? Um, I started homeschooling in eighth, yeah, in eighth grade. I'm in ninth grade now. And it was mainly because of acting and because of dancing. Uh, it was just so much for me to handle going to school and going directly to dance, like barely having any time to recuperate. And I just feel like it really wasn't good on my mind, especially that um, in my personal opinion, when I went to that particular school, there was a lot of time being wasted, unfortunately. And obviously that's something that you can't avoid in school, but homeschool, you can get your work done. And I do get a lot of work. Like it's a, it's a college approved school and it's, it's hard, but I don't have to waste time and make, you know, it's just a lot more convenient with my schedule, especially that stuff just comes up. That's the thing with my schedule. I don't really have a schedule a lot of times because it'll be like last minute here audition. Okay. You book this, you know what I mean? And it's like, I would be missing so much school so it can just do yeah. school when I'm available. And so that, that yeah. Was yeah. Personally. Yeah, it's per yeah. Personally, it works. Um, doesn't work for everyone and that's totally okay. 
but it's definitely a good option when going into the industry if you're going to make sure that you have enough social aspect because if you're at home all the time it drives you crazy no absolutely and did you have any negativity at school from other people you know prior to eighth grade did, did you have that uh, you to to did about that yeah honestly when i was when i was still going to school dance was my main thing and i wasn't really into the whole acting thing yet um there was a lot of negativity at my school anyway um but the, the thing is about people that don't understand actors and they you know why would they right they're like oh if you're not in, on any big shows if i haven't seen you on tv you're not actually an actor that's the whole conspiracy that people just don't really get and i'm like yeah it's great to be on big shows and stranger things and that's great but that's it comes with time you know it takes 100 auditions to book that one you know what i mean it's kind of a build-up so it's like they don't really the negativity was like basically you know uh turning around the fact that i actually am an actor i'm not saying oh i'm great and i'm you know i've already got there no i'm aspiring i'm growing every day but you know it just kind of sucks when someone like puts you down about it i'm like you don't know my life and i don't necessarily know yours so don't you know be one to judge absolutely so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you you've obviously had this, you've gone through this, you've come out the other side, you've dealt with this negativity. And of course, I'm sure that with auditions and with acting, you've dealt with rejection too. Yes. A lot of auditions comes with a lot of letdowns. Oh, so um, yeah, that's, that's so true. You know, talk to me about that. You, right. Okay. So if you go for an audition or you go for auditions and you get rejected, you can't have, you can't think that it's your fault or that you failed because that's just part of the process. And that's something that before going into it, you need to kind of accept mentally because, you know, it can be tough. You can't think, whoa, I'm, I feel like I'm not good enough. But most of the time, it's probably because your hair wasn't the right color or they decided to go with a boy or you're not tall enough. So my advice would just to be to focus on yourself, making sure you did the best you can and feeling good about what you did because eventually it will be what they're looking for. There's so many looks in Hollywood. You see, like, they're casting all ethnicities and all this, and they're not really sure what they're looking for a lot of times until they see it. So, in, like, with that being said, have the best performance you can, stand out, be outgoing in the room, and they will remember you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and don't take it personally. I no, yeah, definitely don't take it personally. Important point. Do not take if it I took it personally, personally, I'd be crying all the time. Like, yeah, so if you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I say audition, focus on it, do the best you can, move on, forget about it. If they call you back, great. If they don't, just forget. Yeah, and we have a lot of new people joining us all the time, and a um, few people are making comments and asking questions here. Bella Alexandra is, hi, Bella. She's asking, do you homeschool? And we were actually just talking to Miller about the fact that from eighth grade on, she decided to homeschool because in terms of her schedule, it worked out a lot better for her because she was doing so much dancing, so many auditions. It just didn't work out having to go to school and go to classes. So yes, she is homeschooled. And um, Julianne yeah. is, is writing here, 100%, it takes time and everything will come at the right time. God made us all for a purpose and we will reach that one in a lifetime opportunity soon in life. Thanks, Julianne. That's a really nice- I love question. that, yep. Aiden. And hi, Aiden. I want to say a special shout out to Aiden, another of my next generation role models and very hey. good friend of Miller. So we want to say hi. <laughs> and Julianne also wants to know how far you've gone right now. So in terms of your career, how far have you gone in your career? I'm supposing she means acting. Um, that's actually, that's an interesting question. Um, well, okay, I don't know if this is relating to it exactly. My goal would be to book like a series regular or a feature film, like something that's more mainstream, just because that's, as an actor, that's what we work for. Um, but I've done, I mean, I'm happy with what I've done. I've had so much fun on sets. Uh, I'm trying to think of things that people would recognize the name of. Have you ever heard of LOL Surprise Dolls? They sell them at like Target. You heard, yeah, I, I want to... No? What? I have, definitely. Oh, you have? Sorry. You cut yeah, off yeah. Me, my bad. Yeah, um, so I was, I'm one of their dolls, and I've done a few, like, I, they have, like, an online web series, and I go in on set, and I dance with them, and I act for them. Um, that's something, like, 
that's trying to think of names. Um, I've done a few commercials, which was a lot of fun. I did a commercial. I was actually, I was, uh, I was a gymnast in it, which was really cool. Um, I've done a few independent films that have gone to film festivals. I've won a few Best Actress Awards, which is also like rewarding to go and you see your face on a screen and then they're like, oh, you won. And then it was just like, ah. Um, just like moments like, like those. 14 years old. She's already done all of this. She started out as a gymnast, then she became a dancer and now she's also acting. So it's pretty incredible. It's very incredible. <laughs> Thank you Absolutely. so much. You're so sweet. You are awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I look up to your page. Your page is awesome. Seriously. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me just check. I know there's some more questions here and, and people are chiming in on some of this, on some of this here. We've got a lot of people joining us. It's so nice. Yay. <laughs> yes, guys, I am coming to you live from just outside of London. That is correct. And yes, I am British. And somebody's asking here, is this page for model kids and for teenage models? And no, it's not for models. It is for role models, which is a very different thing to a yes, model. That's, a role yeah. model, let's just clear that one up right here. A that's role important. model is somebody who's setting a great example and somebody who people look up to and model their life on them so that they can help them achieve their goals. And I've had many role models in my life. And actually, my next question for Miller is, who is your role model? And if you met them, what would you do with them? Okay, I don't know. This is probably not your typical answer, but when I first would think of that question, I would think about my parents, even though I've already met them and experienced with them, just because they have such a big impact on my life. And what I know comes from not just my past experiences, but from them. Like they, I don't have siblings and they push me and they help me grow every day. They're always like my number one fan. They have my back. Um, just having people like that in your life that are so supportive and like a role model to you. I look up to them. They are classical musicians. They are so talented and they worked so hard to where they are now. What, the thing's funny is that uh, as far as like, you know, competition, my dad went to UCLA and my, and my mom went to USC. So if we were football fans, that would be crazy. Cause you know, us <laughs> Americans with the football, um, but we're not. But yeah, I am really grateful for them. As far as actors, there's so many like actors that I think are really talented, but um but I don't really have an insight on their life necessarily since they're more like public figures. Um, and that's the thing, like what I feel about being a role model is that online, you really try to spread positivity and motiv motivate people and ask them, like I ask them on a personal level, like what are you doing to stay, you know, positive during this time? And like, are you able to stay active? Kind of just engaging. Um, but on a more personal level, like, being able to encourage someone and ask them how their life is going and how they can, how they can, you know, how to help them out basically. But that's something that's more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I feel like. Uh -huh. And especially like a one-on-one -on -one that people watch the live and they're like, oh, okay. You know, more of a talk rather than like a caption and a post. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of different aspects about that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I want to take one more question here because Bella's brought up an interesting question here. She said, do you have more real friends in the industry or are your best friends outside of the industry? I struggle making friends in the industry. That's, uh, I really love that uh, question because. Great um, question. Hi. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, a lot of times in the industry, oh God, I'm trying to phrase this. I just feel like you need to be careful with opening up and being friends with, with people because you never really okay this sounds this, this sounds really deep and dark but it's it's not you just at the end of the day you just want to be careful who your friends are and who you're necessarily opening up to on a personal connection because i found that in the past um i i honestly do and i feel like a lot of other actors can probably relate it is hard making friends in the industry just because it's so competitive and people are really looking out for themselves and that can honestly affect our behavior towards other people. And I'm not saying, oh, you're a bad person, but it just comes, sometimes it comes off as that vibe that you don't really want to be around them because you don't feel welcome by them. Um, but I do, especially like Aiden, I met him in the industry and he's one of my best friends, so genuine. Um, and I do have a lot of friends aren't that aren't, like that aren't part of the industry, but some of my closest friends 
are. And you just got to get to know them and really know who's actually there for you. So that's something I've also learned. Be careful. Because um, you just don't want to get hurt. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like a heartbreak as a relationship. But at the same time, if you're opening up to someone and sharing them your life on a personal connection, and then they just kind of push you aside, it just kind of hurts. Um, but as far as like my manager, I'm with PR and we go to a lot of social events. It's like, we have a really tight group and that's probably my closest group of friends. So long yeah, answer, just, but just, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question actually to think about. It's a very good question. And I have to say on my part as well is that my wealth comes from my connections. And I've realized this over the years that, um, despite the amount of people that I know, um, and despite however much money I have in the bank, I really feel like my wealth is in the people who are around me and yes. people who support me. So choose those people really, right. really. And yeah, choose people that who are actually there for you, not just going to smile when you're accomplished. Okay, I always love this quote. You want friends who are there for you when it's cloudy rather than when you're smiling and happy because you'll know if they're there for you or if they just like you because of your accomplishments. I know at school, when people knew I was a dancer or whatever, an actor, they, you know, pretended to be my friend and wanted to be around me when I won a competition. But then a week later, it's like, oh, I was just opening up on a personal level. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't book that audition I wanted to. And it's like all of a sudden they don't feel like you're cool anymore and they don't want to be your friend. It's just a deceiving idea. But uh, it's just, yeah, be careful with um, who you're surrounded by because you want to be surrounded by people that make you feel happy. Absolutely. Omar here, who's who's a next generation role model, he was on the show last week. Yeah. And Omar saying, Yeah, this happens all the time. People pretend that you ha and this and you have to be careful who you surround yourself with. Absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just one of those things. And actually, you know what? It's not a majorly bad thing. You just have to choose your people really carefully. Right. Um, I don't want people to feel upset or sad about it. Just really check in with yourself. Yeah. When, you're, when you're around people, check in with when you go away from that person, how do they make you feel? Do you feel inspired right. around them? Which is the whole point, by the way, guys, of Next Generation Role Model, because these people are people chosen by me, people who are inspiring, people who want to help others genuinely to help right. pull right. everyone else up with them. Because guess what? You never make it alone. You never exactly. do. It doesn't yes. work like that. Um, so talking about helping others, I know, Miller, that you love to help other people. Talk to me a little bit about your charity work and what you do to um, assist other people. Oh, uh, okay. I've been doing a lot of raising, I raise awareness for autism. I support Spread the Love, um, spreading, sorry, Spreading the Love charity. They have a lot of events that I'll go and I'll talk and I'll do interviews about spreading awareness, uh, participate in their fundraisers. And that's probably my main source. And i probably got connected through them through the industry which is very cool and this is why I love social media as a platform to connect with peers and nonprofit organizations that's lifting people up um you know I donate here and there to other charities mainly but as far as one that I've like stayed connected to personally I would definitely say spreading the love um you know great organization and I always think spreading awareness is great um it just, it makes you feel good about yourself, you know, you, doing things to help other people genuinely, not because you have to, but because it just, it makes you feel like you're engaged in kind of the world necessarily, you know, like not even, oh, posting a selfie, you know, on social media, but no, doing stuff for your community. Um, yeah. So important okay. to, to be aware yeah. of yes. around you and being aware of your surroundings like the world doesn't just revolve around you as an actor because sometimes right. it's myself as an actress that it can be a very self-involved self-indulgent kind of business you know you're wearing right. the look, you go on the red carpet you're on the set you know but I found especially with my career that some of my happiest times has been my charity work and helping others and yes um, that really is um, the most amazing feeling, which again is another another reason for next generation role model. <laughs> yeah, it's like basically how you feel about yourself as a person rather than as, you know, as an actor or as a career, because that's great. And, you know, like I was saying, when you go on audition or when you have a performance, think about just yourself. And that doesn't like sounds, 
it sounds self-centered when you think about it, but it's, you know, just in the moment when you're trying to focus, block out everything else. But as far as like a person, of course, you know, you want to help out and do something that's not just for you. Of course, you don't want to seem like, oh, it's just about me, me, me. Uh, that's always the worst feeling, like being concerned if people think you're selfish. I don't know. I, I don't ever want people to think that of me because it's just not a not something I want them to think. No, it's not, and it's not it's, healthy. It's no, not it's healthy. not, yeah. The best, the best thing to do is be concerned about how you feel about yourself. Be right. very, be much less concerned about how others feel about you and worry yes. about how you feel in yourself, which is a, a very important thing that I learned over the years as well. Right. Uh, don't listen to other people's opinions. That's their opinion. And, you know, yes. how did I feel after that audition? <laughs> you know, how, how did I think that that went for right. me? Yeah, because, mm, you know, they're going to have their own opinion. And, of course, I will, I'll respect, you know, what they think of feedback. If they have feedback for you, that's great. But if you feel like you worked hard on this and you gave a good performance and you made, you know, a lot of times in auditions, they are not going to make you feel the best about yourself. Um, I mean, it's not, it's just how it is i guess it really it, depends and you it, know what's it's unfortunate very cold room sometimes oh it's so many and it's kind of an uncomfortable feeling but my favorite auditions are the <laughs> ones that they do make you feel welcomed and i've noticed that my performance is a lot better when they are like that and that's something that i needed to work on because i'm like okay i can't let their persona get to me as an actor because it'll screw up my performance and i can't count on them being friendly I'm not saying they're bad people, but they're just, you know, they're working and probably didn't, they've probably been doing this all day. You know, it's just same for them. Um, so definitely working on yourself, being in the right, having patience. Patience is key. Positive. Patience, key. persistence is key. So uh, many, yes. So many gems and pearls of wisdom on the show today. We're getting a lot of amazing comments. Uh, yes. And, uh, something I'm Raven. Thank you. Another next generation role model. Um, is saying here something I am working really hard on is exactly this finding confidence inside. So so yeah. brilliant, so brilliant. And I'm I'm looking at some of the questions here as well that we have. And um, just some some of the other comments are I love this interview. Oh, <laughs> awesome! Yeah. I'm glad. And and Thank people you. are saying hi and that you're a great person and you're getting so many nice comments. Mm, you guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is what it's about, supporting each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's about uplifting your community. Uplifting your community, <laughs> helping each other and so also important. connecting with each other. I was saying earlier that my connections are got like gold to me. They they really yeah. are. And it's a it's, oh, yeah. for me, a lot of my wealth is who do I know and who can I approach to help me on certain things or talk to about certain things or whatever. It's, um, it's a really important point. So please do connect with each other here and please yeah. do um, follow Miller, uh, drop her a DM, say hi. If you love yes. this interview, let her know. We're so happy to have you on the show, Miller. You've been thank so fantastic. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You're, you're oh. awesome. I'm so <laughs> thank you. It's an honor being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're Such so a great all of your all of your wisdom and and it's Thank incredible at, for, at 14 to to be the way you are and that's why you. you're a generation your next generation role model and you are leading the way for other people and i really appreciate that which is why we want to put the spotlight on you thank you so much Anne.